Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to the biggest stars here on the strip. And one of my favourite shows ever is Absinthe. It's in a Spiegel tent. It's different. It's outrageous. It's shocking. And uh, there's a fabulous pair of uh, gorgeous, talented performers who I'm going to see tonight. Uh, one of them's from Manchester. Cadence, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to talk to you. And of course, Linda from the Netherlands. Hi, I'm good, thank you. Hey, nice to talk to you both. Firstly then, let's set up this show. It's called Absinthe. It's outrageous. It's hosted by two of the most shocking people in Las Vegas who just tear their house down every night making people laugh and in between there's unique acts which is you guys it's slightly outrageous I think you can only get away with it in Vegas maybe and uh, it offends a couple of people maybe if they don't understand the angle you know they don't understand it's kind of satire but it can be taken a little the wrong way um, but yeah it's just a fun show and it's a little difficult to invite uh, your parents and stuff but they, they manage they get through it would yeah. be a little bit awkward how did you find out about it how do you get the gig then well actually I've heard about absent years ago I think five or six years ago when they were doing New York or um, they were performing in New York with absent and I've already like heard about it and it was really cool from fellow performers but I mean I was only working in Europe at the time so then when I met Ross the the owner how do you say this the yeah he, he came to see a show of, of mine in Amsterdam and he, he asked me to be part of Epson. I was very excited. Like I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. And it was a very hard challenge for us to, to get there because we needed a lot of training and a move to the US is kind of a big thing, you know, to like just leave everything behind. And it was a very short notice too, but we were here a year yeah, now. And actually next week we've done a year and it's all been actually very awesome. Yeah. It worked a lot better than we thought, I think. Yeah. We've had more success in, in training and, and things like that than we expected, so it's all a bonus, yeah. A few years ago they said to me, do you want to interview this guy called the Gazillionaire? And I said, yeah, I suppose, what, what, what have I got to lose? <laughs> and there I was sat in these two chairs, and um, it was interesting. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and he doesn't give a shit. I'm sorry, am I allowed to No, say no, that? please do, go ahead. He doesn't give a shit if he offends you, and it's funny for everyone else if you get offended, so, you know. I love it. I, everything's so nice now, and especially over here, if you watch TV, I love the late shows, but they're so cliched and they do the formulaic jokes. This is the opposite of that. It's the antithesis of safe, isn't it? You take risks and you're here to be surprised and shocked. So we then come to your act in between Gazillionaire doing his nonsense. Um, what happens? What do we get to see? Well, we are lesbian schoolgirls <laughs> performing a trapeze act. It starts very innocent and in the end, it's not so innocent. <laughs> So, okay, where do we go with that then? Lesbian schoolgirls. Um, how do you get this past the regulators? I don't know if there is regulators here. Is there such a thing as a regulator in I Vegas? Think it's Vegas? Anything yeah, goes, anything no? Goes. I think so. Well, it's like the first time I saw Zumanity, and you've got the little guy, the little chap, two feet tall, in the bath with the guy who's about six foot seven. It's about shocking and, and making you rethink, isn't it? That's what these acts are about. Yeah, but it's not like Zumanity, where it's, no. it's pretty sexual. It's very different to me because yeah. Zumanity for me is very sexual and very explicit for us it's more it's comedy it, it's sexual. comedy sex yeah and it's also it's did it, you just say comedy sexual yeah man you can have that it's like edgy it's a bit dirty it's not like i went to humanity and i felt like it was soft porn a little bit whereas here i'm like oh my god it's just funny and dirty and sex is funny right well it I is especially when it's somebody like me because i'm deeply unattractive as you can <laughs> see and you know i was told years ago if you can make a woman laugh you can get anything when i've taken my clothes off they're still laughing it's it's disappointing well uh, you could deny it right okay story of my career <laughs> So let's talk about you two and how you get here then. So you're from Manchester. How do you arrive in Las Vegas? Oh my God. Um, it was a, it was via a lot of places. Um, I started circus school and then I actually, for my first circus school was in London. Did two years there. But for our discipline, it wasn't the best. I didn't have the best time there. We moved then to the Netherlands, which is when I started to work with a different teacher. And I did two years with that teacher. And it's the same teacher. So he introduced us. We were both looking for another partner. And she got this gig and she really needed a flyer who was capable and could be ready and yeah we did we we met and we trained for two months every day with with Yuri Sakhalov he's insane Russian but a genius at this and he just got us ready and it was hard work and we did premiere and it was all came around too quickly um, but yeah it kind of just happened in a blink really she called me and she said oh there's this job in Vegas are you interested and I was like uh, okay you know I was supposed to be for five months first but it ended up being a year and here we are sat at three o'clock in the afternoon. You've two shows tonight. I mean, this is a full-time job. 
Yeah, it's a full-time job, I guess, in the hours it is, but we have a lot of free time in the day. I mean, we do two shows a night. Today we train, so we're here really early, but that's our choice. We want to try to progress and go further. But normally we just do two shows. We arrive at 7-ish, 7.15, and we get out of here at 12. Well, we only do twice our act, and our act is fairly short. It's just six minutes. Obviously, we have to warm up, do makeup, put our costumes on and we have like preparation time but we have a lot of time during shows I, yeah. I study Russian yeah. she studies French it's no and in the day we have I have all day when I wake up until seven so in a way we have time to do other yeah, things we have a lot of time and yeah we make a choice to train so then it's longer days and this is just particularly early because our coach came but yeah I don't feel like it's a full-time job we train we train twice or three times a week and you know when you do shows you're here from seven till midnight it's more of a full-time job for your head it can be a bit of a head fuck but it's yeah it's more like a mentally full-time job there's a lot to stress about sometimes and a lot to like mentally prepare yourself for but as working hours we're really lucky we have plenty of time in the day to do what we like so we got as far as the lesbian schoolgirls. sorry to come back to that and and of course the thing about you two is you're both delicious and i noticed this the minute i saw you um how much pressure is it to avoid the buffets here why have you gone red what am i embarrassing you <laughs> no 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 i'm just, uh, just it's radio so it's fine yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> um, you can check no but nobody check nobody actually <laughs> google us and check <laughs> oh i'd love to google you um we were talking about being delicious and avoiding the buffets because this is a town where you could get really fat isn't it well, yeah, I guess, but I think that's more of an American thing, or it is to me. I feel like here, what do people eat? It's just insane. Like from home, Washington. from home, yeah, from here to home, I think I drive by eight McDonald's. Seriously, eight of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course we have to watch our weight, but yeah. we have to do that because we we so are in the air. Yeah. I think we already had our eating habits before we came here. And for me, like I don't eat wheat and gluten, and I try and avoid sugar. But I come to America, that's hard to avoid sugar. So I notice a little more, but. Yeah, you can't, I don't, I, I'm never really on a diet. I just eat the way I eat. And if you eat the right things, you can eat what you like. And you can go to a buffet here and just make the right choices. But it is the town to eat really nice food. We like to go to nice restaurants and, and things like that. But This is a betting town. I arrived yesterday, I'm here for two and a half weeks. I think I could put on three stone by the time I leave. What do you right. think? Are you yeah. prepared to $10 bets? Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. possible, isn't it? Now, what's interesting about you is your height and your different in stature. Neither of you are big at all. But I guess because of what you do, you you have to be different in frame yeah i have to stay really strong and really light i'm actually really tall for a flyer i'm ginormous i'm five foot three so huge um <laughs> but yeah if you go to europe the flyers are all so small so yeah i have to watch my weight but i think we're we're both like i'm tall for a flyer she's tall for a female catcher we're both like slender and so i think when it when it fits in the act it looks really nice we have really long lines and a really big swing and so it works but yeah I have to watch my way but she can take a lot heavier I wanted to be a female catcher in my career but mine isn't going so well if you know what I'm saying I do know what you're saying yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? I'm seeing this tonight. There's a lot of throwing in the air, flying around in your job to catch. Yes. Yeah. Basically, I throw her in the air and I catch her and she and she saltos <laughs> around and flies. Yeah. What's great about this show, it is not a theatre. It's one of these old Spiegel tents and it's gorgeous and it's completely unique. And the show sort of starts before the show starts. It's a great atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah, you kind of like, I have a queue really at the start of the show. So I stand near the door and I see people coming in and from the outside, they don't expect to walk into this. They really don't. And it's like, I would want my living room to look like this if I could deck it out and all this stuff it's interesting. seriously yeah really really i like this old school style and i think you can come and everyone has a different experience because you can't see everything in here you miss things you could come back to the show four times five times and you'd see something different every time and the acts do change don't they within the show well a little they rose it a little bit we have sometimes extra out because people are on holidays and everything but i think what especially makes it special in vegas it's so different any, anything else here in vegas everything's big and everything's yeah. shiny and, right. and 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 glittery and and i don't know huge and and this is it overwhelming I mean I come here and I have the best time ever but I get to go so I'm always happy to come come back and return you guys have to sort of put up with the traffic I was saying earlier you know when you when you annoyingly rescheduled this interview I'm trying to work out car parks and hotels and get in here oh, no it's fine you're attractive valet. I don't mind you do valet 
You don't find a car park. Just pay the valet, man. And what do I have to pay? This is another thing, tipping. Never understood it. Do I give $2 to him? Am I being cheap? Do I need to make it 5 or 50 You give the receipt to your boyfriend and you ask him to tell you what the tip is. I don't have a boyfriend. Well, he says something like you double the tax. Is that right? You double the tax? Yeah. In the restaurants, you double the tax. And if you want to be nice, you add a couple of dollars. Yeah. And well, I don't want to be nice. So well, normally, I I'm think not coming back. The tax is 10%, so yeah. normally it's 20%. Yeah. And I think valet... I think to be average, it's like four or five dollars you give. That's a nice, they're, they're happy with it. One dollar's cheap, two dollar's cheap, three is passable, four is okay, five, everything over five is very nice. Yeah, it's just a mind thing. They're not going to fart in your car next time. Right. That's, that's what it is. And, and that's the tip, that's what we don't want, farting in cars. So that's why you got a tip here, because if you don't tip, they're not going to be very happy the next time you come in. They get their own back. <laughs> okay, I need to go back to Monami Gabby where I had dinner last night and only left 10%. They're not <laughs> going to be very happy, no. are they? No. no. Then no, not in Monami Gabby, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go and see her now. Um, this show then, it's on at Caesars Palace. Well, it's outside Caesars Palace, it, opposite the Flamingo. And again, if you see one show in Vegas, I really recommend this because it's fun and it's different and you're all so blessed and talented. And, and seriously, what you do is so unique. It's great that there's still shows like this to put on special acts. That's what we We'd call them in the UK these unique different acts that can't really work anywhere else I mean they're not going to put you in uh, in the middle of a West End musical these are roles created for yourselves yeah I think I think the beauty of this show it's so different one because it's so close you're not in this huge theatre where the performers are these little dots really far away you don't relate to here I think people like it they can see our face they can see what our bodies are doing they can like they really move away when we swing past they get out of the way so they really have more of a like tactile experience, I guess. And you know, when the skaters are going around, you see the front row moving, moving back. And so they, t- I think it's such, it's so personal when they come here. And what about the drunk people? You do late shows about 10 or 10.30. Oh, that must be difficult. Yeah, it's very annoying sometimes. Seriously, sometimes when they scream things or... But then it's all... Sometimes it can also be very funny. When I'm up yeah. there on certain days and they say things, I just laugh it's with them. Funny. I look yeah. at them and like, haha, is that very funny? I mean, it also depends on our mood, obviously. Like, there are days where we're just really tired and it just takes this huge effort to stay concentrating when the whole room is just, like, drunk and annoying. Yeah. But... Uh, in general it's kind of fun actually because yeah. we do the same show twice a day but it's never the same show because the audience is always different and you can kind of tell when you come out okay there's a few people there next to the mats they might be trouble and you know like I guess the more drunk the crowd is the more we get flashes on a camera which is horrible for us they you know they shouldn't do it but they do um, but I think for me like yeah it can be really fun we've had sometimes the crowd is so drunk and they're so behind you that on the worst day when your body feels like crap and you don't want to do it it makes it really enjoyable but then sometimes they're so drunk and they're a little too close to you and then it's scary and you're like please don't pick me out of the air while I'm flying by you know I do like drunk people though because I find they (laughs) they sort of see me as a little bit more attractive takes the edge off it doesn't it well it depends if you're drunk yourself right not the drunk people (laughs) either way (laughs) I think (laughs) Drunk people and I'm sober are very unattractive. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Listen, if ever I were going to be a cast in Absinthe, I'd love to come here as a schoolgirl lesbian. I think it's probably the best role in Las Vegas. You Girls, do you, you think so? Yeah, we could braid your hair and yeah. the skirts look good. <laughs> I don't have the tattoos, though. Congratulations on those. They're a I, work of art. I get a new one in a week on my holiday. What, what are you doing? Where? Another one of these, like on my shoulder here. Doesn't it hurt too much, though? You are a girl. Um... It doesn't hurt. My my rib tattoo? Yeah, man. Have you seen what I do? That shit hurts. I'm not really a girl. Um, I've had a rib tattoo, so everything else that's not on my ribs doesn't hurt as much as that, so it's fine. Hmm. Well, congratulations to both of you. What a fabulous show this is. Absinthe, it's on here at Caesars Palace. Really nice to talk to you, and good luck with the show tonight. I'll see you at 10. Sure. Thanks. We'll see you there. Thank you. See you tonight. Bye.